Today we're joined by Eduardo Alcalé of GP Investments. Eduardo, welcome to PrivCap today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Your firm is a pan-Latin American investor. You're based in Sao Paulo and you were one of the original private equity firms uh, in Brazil. Uh, you're also the head of the private equity program at uh, GP Investments. So I'm very happy to have you here and I'd like to hear about what you're seeing uh, down in Latin America and specifically in Brazil. First of all, can you give us a sense of sort of what percentage of your capital goes ex Brazil versus Brazil? Mm -hmm. Well, until uh, now, you know, a small percentage goes uh, out of Brazil. We've made an investment in a pan Latin American sort of oil field service company, but that was a while ago. More recently, we've been focusing uh, on Brazil. Uh, going forward, we may look especially at the Andes, you know. Peru, Colombia, and, and Chile as all their regions, but we are mostly sort of centered in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about Brazil a bit now. Um, obviously, going through some economic turmoil, what is the mood among business leaders in Brazil, and what do you think that spells as far as opportunities for private equity firms such as yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, the mood is, uh, is, you know, is something which is quite uh, challenging right now. People are concerned. Business confidence in, is in record lows because of all the problems and the challenges ahead of the country in terms of a macro as well as micro sort of a environment. Uh, interest rates are high, uh, economic activity is going backwards. Uh, so yes, it is uh, a very challenging environment. Business owners are, you know, taking care, being cautious, uh, but at the same time, you know, Brazil is a very dynamic economy, new segments, you know, being developed and so forth. So business owners, you know, they need capital either to strengthen their businesses or to fund interesting sort of a consolidation processes. And more and more, they need capital together with sort of a managerial improvement, long-term, more robust execution capabilities and so forth. And that's where we get in. Where we get in pretty capable of contributing those two elements, capital and managerial support, great long-term execution. Where are you able to find companies that are growing quickly despite the fact that the macroeconomic conditions are not favorable? Yes, you know, this is sort of a quite, uh, quite uh, counterintuitive, but yes, as I said, you know, Brazil is a relatively young economy compared to US or Europe. You have many, many sort of a business segments like uh, consumer financial services, education, healthcare, a technology infrastructure that, you know, regardless of an overall macro negative environment, these new segments are growing because they have a big market to support, they have a big demand to supply. And yes, you find some great champion companies that have growth capabilities ahead of them, they need capital, there is no public uh, uh, capital out there, there is very scarce credit capital out there, and they need strong managerial support. So yes, we're pretty busy. You and I, in speaking earlier, uh, you gave uh, an example of uh, auto insurance as an industry that is sort of in its infancy in mm -hmm. Brazil. Can you talk about how that might be an interesting play, despite the fact that maybe all other factors surrounding that industry are negative? Yeah, that's a typical example. You know, a skeptical analyst would look and say, well, GDP is going backwards, so car sales are going backwards, so nothing related to that would be uh, interesting to look at, but you know, and again, this is historical economic development. Uh, Brazilians have bought cars, a lot of cars, over the last booming 10 years uh, because of you know uh, habits, because of behavior, and so forth. Lots of those cars remained uninsured, but now you know the guys are getting to the point that you know we need insurance and insurance businesses, especially consumer insurance, is growing significantly. So there's plenty of opportunity, both to insurance underwriters, but also insurance brokers, right, to do great businesses, and especially by consolidating a big, a big nationwide platform of insurance brokerage to serve and sort of uh, uh, occupy that gap that uh, has grown significantly over the last years. Having been in business in Brazil for a couple of decades uh, in the private equity business, which doesn't have a long history uh, mm -hmm. in, in Brazil, um, how have you seen the attitude of business owners and entrepreneurs change by way of their impression of private equity? 
Are you having more natural conversations with potential sellers now than you did maybe 15 years ago? Uh, if you compare Brazil to other Latin American countries, and again, up from Mexico down to Chile, I think Brazil has had a more open uh, mentality uh, from the business owners towards, you know, a, a good quality potential partner, you know. So we've been getting more and more sort of a, uh, business owners open and willing to entertain conversations, willing to consider doing private equity deals, and more and more so, especially in times like this, you know, in times with under very sort of a big challenging uh, environment, uh, business owners, you know, they more and more understand that either because of the fact that they are facing succession problems in their family held companies or to take their companies to another level in terms of growth, in terms of development. And also, you know, thinking about better governance, thinking about, you know, institutionalizing their, fam their companies with a long-term view, more and more they are open to private equity investors. And again, this is my view, if you compare that to countries like Mexico, Chile, and, and Peru, I think Brazil is ahead of the curve in terms of uh, that openness uh, uh, mentality model for private equity. Well, since you also invest outside of Brazil, uh, I'm interested in where you see pockets of strength and pockets of opportunity for your style of investment right now. Yeah, you know, uh, the Andes looks great. Uh, Colombia and Peru, they've been performing quite well. They've done great changes, great sort of uh, macro adjustments uh, in their policies, in the economy over the last 10 years. And the results are being there, both industrials and consumer markets in those uh, countries are doing well. And again, f companies are growing, markets are consolidating and so forth. And uh, there are good pockets of opportunities there. Chile is, even though it's, it's smaller, much smaller than Brazil, is a fairly more developed country with very highly professional sort of a business conglomerates, uh, pension funds and the like. It is more an expensive market, uh, but still with good opportunities because, you know, the economy and the country functions uh, pretty well. The Andes, you know, these three countries together, Chile, Colombia and Peru, they account in aggregate for more or less a third of the business activity, private equity investment uh, size of Brazil, so they are relevant in aggregate, so we are looking at that as well. Uh, but again, you know, Brazil, where we are locals, where is the big critical mass market, remains to be our most important sort of a focus.